Activis Productions. Man, honestly, God gave me that name, bro. I don't even, I didn't like that name at first. I was trying to figure out, what should my name be? I had so many trash names, and I'm like, I'm just gonna wait. And then it just dropped to me one day, Canvas. And I didn't like how it was spelled. So then that's why I put an X there, and I found out in Greek, I think it's the Greek lettering, X has the same sound as a K. So I'm like, oh, it's still Canvas, you know, depending on what alphabet you're using. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how I got my name now. Um, I think I saw the movie Ray, and I was like, I want to do music, but I was like, I'm not trying to learn all that. At first, I was like, the music shit is too much. And then I was, um, I got the light bulb, light bulb went off in my head when I was watching um, a music video with Dr. Dre and the game, the um, This Is How We Do music video. And I had a keyboard at the time, and I heard the melody, and I just played it out. I felt like I just heard it by ear, and I was like, oh, that's all they doing? So a light bulb went off. I was like, that really wasn't a lot of like, I wasn't pl really playing. I'm like, I might be able to make beats. But that was at like 10. And I didn't actually start making beats till I was like 15. So I think that's kind of what sparked that idea of like, oh shit, I might not be able to play the keys like Ray Charles, but I, play, I just played the melody Dr. Dre made and Dr. Dre is like, everybody looks at him. I'm like, all right, I might be able to make some beats. That's kind of how I got started. To me, my, my definition of <clears throat> a producer is someone that makes the product. Um, I consider myself more of a producer than an engineer. To be honest, I don't even really think I'm that gifted as an engineer. I don't have that much passion to engineer as I do to produce. The engineer and the producer, they help make the song pretty much come alive. The, the producer will have the idea, even if he doesn't make beats. I make beats, but I don't really, I don't just consider myself a beat maker. But <clears throat> if the producer comes up with an idea, makes the beat or buys a beat from somebody like how Khaled does, uh, it's up to them, the artist and the engineer to execute that idea. Um, but I consider myself more of a producer than an engineer, if anything. Matter of fact, during the Fila project, I was making beats while the rest of the producers were like engineering and like uh, tracking all the other rooms. So I made probably, I seen in that first like, 20 something and then by the end of the four days I made like another 30 beats because I wasn't I wasn't tracking anything I was still producing mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest uh, if I'm just making beats to make beats I like to choose samples because um, that just lays, uh, it's a feeling already or a foundation I can build off of. But if I'm working with artists, I, I, I'm not, I don't try to be like, let's start with a, a sample. I ask them what are they trying to do? Because if I can't play the keys, I can find somebody who can and we can start from scratch that way. That's another way I can produce. Um, but if I'm just in my room, just by myself, I'm probably gonna start off with a sample. Oh, I was a producer. I came in as a producer um, to make beats. I sent in, I think like 20, some, 20 something beats at first. And then while everybody else was tracking in the rooms, um, recording the other artists, I was in like in another area making beats. I made like another 30, 20 or 30 beats. So I ended up sending like around 50. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much my I was just making hella beats. Yeah, bro, Ray June and um, Tony Foster Jr. I didn't know them at all. And, and Creole, bro. I didn't know, and I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way, but I am i don't go out, so I didn't know anything about them. Like, I don't go out to bars, I don't go out to clubs, so I'm really a recluse. So when I met them, that was my first time ever seeing them. I didn't know anything about their music. I seen their work ethic. I'm like, all right. I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna see what these dudes can do. Cause I think it was me, T Mace, Tony Foster Jr. and Ray June. I don't wanna say somebody else, but it was like the last night. We were the last four, if it was somebody else, a fifth person. We were like the last people there, but they were still like trying to work. And like to this day, we st we're like working on a pro joint project right now. So, uh, and Creole, that dude is a beast. Like 
bro, that nigga, he got a lot of flows, a lot of melodies. That nigga cold, bro. I didn't know he existed. I'm, I'm glad I found out about this nigga, bro. And when I first met him, he was really humble, really nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, my name Creole, this and that. He was just, he was real, what's the, approachable. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like he's gonna be one of the people that definitely get a lot of shine from this, uh, from the Fila project. I hope so, he deserves it. <laughs> I don't know if I should say, I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> um, it came from Evan Almighty. I mean, not Evan Almighty, Bruce Almighty. That um, scene where he was like, do you like jazz, Evan? He was like, -l 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 -l. I could hold this note all day. He was doing that shit. So, but I just kept that, do you like jazz, Evan? That's where I got that from. Do you like jazz, Evan? Yeah. Let me play something for you. Canvas Productions.